But if Krishna is not a personal God, then how can so many people from years ago up to modern times have so many different personal examples and experiences with Krishna acting in so many different ways? That's not possible. Krishna is the Supreme Godhead. Krishna is the most lovable object. And he does interact with his devotees. So these stories, are so many stories, and there's so many more that are out there. I did a, uh, um, a uh, session at the Festival of Inspiration in New Vrindavan last year. And uh, so I opened the session with different examples of how Krishna interacted with their devotees. And then I asked different devotees to come up and start giving their own experiences. And so many people, so many of the devotees had relationships uh, with the deity in so many different ways that uh, it became very inspiring. You know, the festival is supposed to be a festival of inspiration. So I thought, well, let's start it with something inspirational. And so many devotees had stories of how the deity interacted with them, showed them different things, or came into their dreams. So it can happen to you. Maybe it already has. Maybe you've already had these experiences. And if you haven't, then if people have, so many devotees have already had them, then you can just imagine what's waiting for you if you continue to develop your Krishna consciousness on the path of Bhakti Yoga. So it can happen to others, it can happen to anyone who is sincere. And you can talk to any one of these Pajaris that are here in this temple. And many of them have already had experiences. So does that mean they're getting divine eyes? like was given to Arjuna to see the Vishnu Rupa? In some ways, yes. They might not see the universal form. Of course, they're probably not interested in seeing the universal form. They're simply interested in interacting with the deity of Radha Shamasunda, Krishna Balaram, or Gornita uh, in their service. And that continues to happen. So this is why I call the book Krishna Deities and Their Miracles. Because some religions seem to have uh, the idea that they have a monopoly on, re on miracles. Well, quite honestly, they haven't seen anything yet. Quite honestly, there are so many miracles in Krishna consciousness and Bhakti Yoga that uh, you, you can't even begin to document or count them all. So this is what the meaning is of divine eyes, seeing the personality and seeing the loving reciprocation that Krishna can give to not only his devotee Arjuna, and but to also to Srila Prabhupada, to our whole parampara, and even to regular devotees that may be sitting amongst us right now. So, so don't give up, don't lose heart, always be positive, work towards it, because basically, if we all help each other attain a higher level of Krishna consciousness, a higher level of spiritual perception, then Basically, if I help you, and you help me, and we all help each other, it creates a very strong atmosphere of positivity. And it propels us to keep working in this way. So we can share our stories like this. We can share our inspiration. We can share, our, just like last night, we can share our experiences that we've had with Srila Prabhupada. Uh, that's the easiest way to get started. And then we can also share our experiences with the deity of Lord Krishna. And with that, we become convinced, and with our convinced nature, we become uh, eager to engage in devotional service to Lord Krishna. So I'm not going to go on for too long. It's almost 6 o'clock now, and one of my favorite RT is the door RT here at Vrindavan. I always like to stand in the back and just watch the deities and watch the people come and become enthused by seeing the deities. It's amazing. So many people from villages, cities, all over, we come into this temple and just become enthused by the kirtan, the, the seeing the deities, how beautiful they are, how nicely dressed they are. And uh, that itself inspires me. So, uh, and we can see sometimes the, the people come in and they start dancing and, you know, uh, and you wonder how many times has that ever happened in their lives? You know, where they come in and they start dancing in front of the deity or dancing to the cure time. So uh, it's definitely a very powerful effect. So anyway, I like to stand in the back at 6.30 and watch the RT 
and uh, watch the deities and watch the people become enlivened by being in front of the deities and hearing the kirtan. And then I go away more enlivened after that myself. But in that book, uh, Christian Deities and Their Miracles, uh, I, I can relate a couple stories. Where on, one was with uh, Chintamani, Chintamani Devi Dasi. She had uh, little, little Lord Jagannath deities in Japan. And uh, uh, she helped open the Japan temple. And this was a story that wasn't told last night. But uh, one time she was thinking, you know, she was making the Raj Boba offering in Japan, and she was thinking, do the deities really accept this offering? You know, are they really waiting? What, what difference does it make if I'm late or not? And so she's in the kitchen, and she hears this plop. She goes out and looks around. There's nobody there, because, you know, the only other two devotees were Sadama and Bali Martan. They were out on Sankirtan. So she's going like, what the heck? Okay, nothing. So she goes back in and cooks. She's cooking again. She hears another flop. And she goes, now, wait a minute. That's the second time I heard it. And I, something's going on. So she goes out and she sees that Lord Balaram, the deities are on two steps. Lord Balaram is down two steps. And she's, he's looking towards the kitchen. <laughs> And she's going like, okay, okay, I get the message. I'll, you know, keep going, get this offering on time. The deities aren't fooling around. I gotta, you know, do my part. <laughs> so there's another uh, another uh, story that uh, I got from Malati. Most of you, I think, know who Malati is, but she was uh, she was in England at the time, heading up a women's sankirtan party, and. Uh, it was really, really cold, and they'd been spending the, you know, nights in the van and really cold weather. So they got a heater. They got a kerosene heater, and so they're all excited. All oh, right, we got a nice warm evening tonight. So they they fire up the heater, and they're getting ready to go to bed. Now it's nice and warm, and so in the nighttime, she sees Gorni Tai coming down the road doing care time. They're coming down the road, and first thing you know, they're saying, get up, get up. It's time for Mangalarti. And she's so tired that she can't get up. And then pretty soon, I think it was either, I think it was uh, Lord Nichinanda. He said, get up, it's time for Mangalarti. And he kicks her. <laughs> and she rolls practically out of the van. And then she realizes something's wrong. So she gradually opens the door, falls out of the van, and realizes that they're all inebriated from the fumes from the kerosene heater. And that if they would have stayed there, they would have all died. So they were specifically woken up by the deities in such a way that they were saved from, you know, uh, dying from asphyxiation. So, so these are just a couple of the stories. These are modern stories, and there's a bunch of old stories when, you know, uh, say like uh, in Jaipur, the Govindaji deity uh, started to appear playing in an orchard somewhere. A farmer was making it at an orchard, and everything that was in the orchard was specifically to be offered to Govindaji. And then one time, he found two people, two kids, playing in the orchard. So he's going out there, I'm going to get those kids, teach them a lesson, this, this orchard is not for those kids, this is for Govindaji. And so he's chasing him and chasing him, and, and then meanwhile, he goes to see Govindaji, and he sees that at the feet of Govindaji are all these peels of apples. <laughs> and he realizes, oh my gosh, it was, it was Radha Govinda in the orchard, playing, taking the uh, fruits without my permission. Because the thing of it is, some people wonder why Krishna steals. The fact of the matter is, for Krishna, it's more fun. It's just more fun. Why should he wait on the altar to be offered everything when he can play the part of a thief and go out and steal things from people and get them agitated and then reveal that, hey, it was me all along, you know? <laughs> you wanted me to do this anyway, and here I am showing you who I am and what I can do. So this is all part of Krishna's nature. He's more, it's more, once again, it's more reciprocal. It's, it's more fun for Krishna to reciprocate in this way than it is merely to wait on the altar and accept the offerings and things like that. He does that, 
And he accepts your offerings, but if he's really merciful, he'll play with you. And there's so many stories, there's other many stories like that that are also in, uh, in my book, uh, Christian Deities and the Miracles. And you can also get, uh, uh, what is the name of that book by Obiel Kapoor? Experiences in Bhakti. Yeah, I think you can get it downtown here in Lloyd Bazaar. Mm -hmm. Experiences in Bhakti, uh, about, which also has a number of different stories of the same nature. So it's interesting. Um, why don't you pass me the mic? Because sure. it'll be too complicated for you to repeat it on. So since you won't catch me at a, at a festival of inspiration, I couldn't tell this story <laughs> there. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah. So this is a this is a simple story basically. Uh, I was serving in Nairobi for a couple of years in the um, middle seventies, and I was a cook. I was also the driver, and I also used to go out for Matakari. I used to come back only at my dots and pick up was full. So um, the temple president would never give money, so I had to go out and get donations. Since I was a cook, I would use the Maha sweets. Boy, the brahmacharis hated me for that. I would take... <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I, I would be so tired by the time I would get home and I would have to cook the Mahalarji sweets and whatever. And then by the time I'd go to sleep and then I, I'd dream of what I was going to be cooking, the next day, I was pretty, pretty well engaged. So one day, the pujari, uh, one of the women, because the, the women were mainly the pujaris in those days, uh, named Suchi Devi, and she came to me and she said, you know, it seems like, because I was a cook, it seems like everybody's gaining weight except for you. I always had a digestive problem. So then <clears throat> she said, in fact, we had to let out Radharani's skirt, it was too tight for her. So I thought, oh, that's really far out. <laughs> so that, that was one simple experience. I know there must be a lot of people who have similar experiences also. Yeah, I've heard of other deities gaining weight too. We had to actually let the clothes out because the deities were gaining weight. The clothes didn't fit anymore. So, uh, I mean, a Jew, the Muslim tailor, he would come every year to take the deities' measurements. And the devotee said, why do you come every year to take the deities' measurements? He said, they change every year. Sometimes they contract, sometimes they contract. That's all I have to say. Huh. Really? Yeah. There's another question. Sure. Um, is uh, the relationship with Krishna always coming out through the deities or also through Guru? Oh, from, from many different ways. That's uh, okay. Not yeah. only yeah, many different ways. Oh, I have another comment. You may, you may think that the deities are looking around, but they're just looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> I've had the experience of asking other devotees, and they have the same experience. They're not looking, they're looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> and I had a dream once of, of uh, well, I want to explain the whole dream, but I was next. I, I told my daughter, I woke up and I told my daughter, you know, I was right next to Krishna. And, he said, and she answered me very, you know, very instructively, basically. That's because Krishna always makes his devotee feel like he's only there for you. <laughs> That's the same way it's described in the Bhagavatam with the gopis. During the rasa dance, or the or the gopas, or the gopas, yeah. Or when he's playing, it's like he's only playing with that particular devotee. So they're completely satisfied because of that. So uh, yeah. So these are various ways that uh, we can all understand how Krishna reciprocates with his devotees, and he can also reciprocate with you, depending on how greedy you are to obtain love for Krishna. Chaitanya Charitamrita explains that we all have to be greedy for loving Krishna. The more greedy we are, then the more Krishna will reciprocate with us. And the more he will give us that opportunity to attain that love. Because that's what bhakti is all about, really. 
devotional service, but devotion is based on the love we have for offering Krishna our service. That's the essence of it. So, and we're all loving in nature. There's nobody that's not loving. I mean, even the meanest and cruelest person deep inside, either they're calling for love, crying for love, asking for love, begging for love, or expressing love. It's always more advent advantageous to express love than to cry for it, act it out, or demand it, or whatever. But basically, that is the sum and substance of all our relations within this material world, except some people just don't know that. They don't realize it. They don't see that basically I'm mean and I'm angry because I'm not giving enough, getting enough love, or I'm not being able to express my love, or I don't know how to express it. So then they get angry. You know, but that's all it comes down to right there. You know, so if we learn how to express and interact our loving relationship with Krishna, then, hey, problem solved. We just need to go more deeply into that. 